Okay, let's do a trig sub integral real quick. So the problem with this integral is we have this complicated thing stuck inside a square root in the denominator. And the whole point of a trig substitution is to take a thing that looks like this and instead of having two terms, turn it into something with one term. And I notice that I have a constant minus a variable thing squared. And so the idea here is to use this Pythagorean identity Manipulate it a little bit. And now I have a constant minus a variable thing squared. So there is a 9 in here, but if I just tack on a 3 to my substitution before I square it, then I'm going to be able to factor that out. So let's go ahead and do our trig sub. Let x equal 3 sine of some new variable theta. Um, that means that dx is 3 cosine theta d theta. And one thing I wanted to do with this integral is just forget about x forever once we finally made the substitution. And that means I have to transform the limits of integration from x limits to theta limits. So I'm going to say when x equals negative 3 halves, I have negative 3 halves equals 3 sine theta. And I've rigged this problem to come out really nice. So I end up with negative 1 half equals sine theta. So theta is the angle whose sine is negative 1 half. Which means we're talking about negative pi over 6. Um, a similar calculation for the upper limit. I'm just going to skip a step this time. Theta is the angle whose sine is 1 half, which gives me pi over 6. So when I transform this integral, I'm going to have new limits. Uh, then inside the square root, I'm going to end up with a 9 minus the square of x, which is 9 sine squared theta. So let's go ahead and just rewrite the integral now. So I'm going from negative pi over 6 to pi over 6. dx is 3 cosine theta d theta. In my square root, I have 9 minus the square of x, which is 9 sine squared theta. And I can factor out that 9 in the square root, which gives me a 3 on the outside. And I have integral negative pi over 6 to pi over 6. The 3 is going to cancel, but I'll just I'll go ahead and show it in this step. Okay, so the 3 cancels. And now I can replace 1 minus sine squared theta with cosine squared theta. But when I square root that, I just get cosine theta. So I'll go ahead and do all that in the next step. Cosine theta in the numerator. There's a cosine theta in the denominator. And this is nice. That's just 1. And I get the integral of d theta, which is just theta evaluated from negative pi over 6 to pi over 6. And when I plug in the upper limit, I get pi over 6. I get minus what I get when I plug in the lower limit. And that gives me 2 pi over 6, which is pi over 3. Just one little note on this integral. Um, from the very beginning, I could have noticed this is an even function because when I replace x with negative x, I get back the exact same function. And that means with an interval symmetric around the origin like this, I could just do half the integral and double the result. And that would have made my life a tiny bit easier when I was computing this lower limit 